Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at reading files in Perl and at searching for texts, searching for text in files. So we're going to get in this tutorial a first taste of regular expressions and we're going to look at a the simplest possible case of a regular expression. So I'm in Eclipse and I've created a Perl project and I've created a main.pl and by the way main.pl is arbitrary you could call it anything you want uh, Perl is very easy going and I'm going to write here use strict semicolon use warnings semicolon sub main open a curly bracket close the curly bracket and then main to, to actually call this subroutine round bracket semicolon and while, while I'm at it I may also put in here dollar bar equals one to turn off output buffering. Now I want to open a file and read it in line by line and it's a text file and the file that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes is a file here that I got from gutenberg.org and it's the out of copyright My Man Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse which is an extremely funny book and in case you don't know it it's a classic of English comedic literature about a man and his butler, a upper class man, needless to say. So I'm going to say here my dollar file equals, and in single quotes, I'm going to put the file name. And you may recall from previous tutorials that we use single quotes when we want to talk about a literal um, string, so we don't want any anything in here to be interpreted as uh, a special control sequence. For example, we don't want backslash T to be interpreted as a tab. So we put everything in single quotes to prevent that. And then let's see, the file name here is mymanjeeves.txt. So mymanjeeves.txt. And we use dollar because this is just a single variable, one single file name. And file is completely arbitrary. I just called it file for something to call it, but you could call it anything. And I'm declaring it with my, which is necessary if you do use strict. And that's a very, very good thing to do. So let's open this file. I'm going to use a function, a subroutine called open. So I say open and round brackets and a semicolon. And I need to put some arguments in here. And the arguments I need to put are firstly a file handle. And for file handles in Perl, you can use variables. But um, I think partly because I started using Perl before variable file handles were introduced, I think, um, I, I'm a bit old school and I like to use just uppercase letters, like for example, input in uppercase. And this is kind of a convention in Perl. And this, this kind of has, well, it has uh, the scope of it would be within this, these brackets here. And it, it, I'm, I'm not even sure technically what this is, but basically it's going to be a file handle. It's going to be a way of referring to our file. And I don't need to declare this with my, it's a kind of thing unto itself. So just type something here in uppercase letters that identifies your file. That's the first argument. And a comma and a second argument, which is the file name, which is going to be in this case, dollar file, because it's this. Now you mustn't forget to close files, so I'm going to say later on, close input, and Perl again will allow me to miss off the brackets of close here. Close is a subroutine, and I can type close input like this, or I can put round brackets like this, like this around input to, um, well, a lot of people like this style because this emphasizes that it is a subroutine because close input by itself to some people looks a bit uh, hard to interpret. So you could put the brackets in if you want to, but you're not forced to. Now, another thing is that, of course, we don't know if open succeeded. And in programming in general, it's very, very good practice when you open a file to then check if the open succeeded. And if it didn't succeed, quit your program gracefully. To do that, I'm going to use a function called die. 
and um, die immediately terminates your program. Let's just run this actually by itself and see what it does. So it doesn't give us any output and it looks fine. Now supposing I were to write here, let's say die and well let's just put die by itself. In fact let's not because nothing will happen or will it? Let's try it and then just click run. There we go, yeah. So I put die semicolon and what's happened is it says die dat and it gives me a line number. So the program quit at this point, it stopped running. And other stuff down here that I put after die is not going to execute. Let's just put hello there just to demonstrate and I click run that and you see that we don't see hello because it's, it died at this line here. And if I click on this it'll tell me even where it died, which is quite handy. Now you can supply a string to die, so I can say die input file not found. And let's put the name of the file in there. So as we saw in the last tutorial, I can just put a variable in there, like dollar file, and it will, it will be interpreted. As long as I've got double quotes here and not single quotes, variables like this will be interpreted and given whatever they contain, which is this. So let's run this. So within this string that I supplied to die, that gets output here, and it's now saying input file, see tutorial such and such, not found. If you, if you don't want this extra stuff to appear, because sometimes, like I used to write these Perl scripts day in, day out, sometimes for um, kind of end users, who were in like a data team of the company I was working for. And sometimes I think this looks a bit ugly because your end users, they don't want to know what line number your program died on. They just want to know that it's not working. They just want to see this input file not found message and they don't want to see this bit. So if you're writing for an end user, you can prevent that just by putting some new lines in there. If I say backslash n in here, I'm not sure if that will be enough, but let's try, let's run this. And yeah, so now, just because I've got backslash n in there, it no longer says here the line number, which for end users is good. Now we only want this to die if the open failed. And there's a million and one ways to do this, as always in Perl. And we could use an if statement, for example. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, open input dollar file, get rid of the semicolon on the end there, and just say or, and then, say or die input file not found and I, I could also if I want put see die is a method it's a, it's a sorry not a method it's a subroutine a function call and if you like you can put brackets round brackets around this argument just like we do with open like these or close so you can put round brackets in here but you don't have to but die is basically a kind of built-in subroutine in Perl. Now what's this or here? Well, this is uh, something which you may be familiar with from other languages. It's, um, it's trying to evaluate this line and say, uh, if, if, this, if this evaluates to true, then the whole line would evaluate to true. If this evaluates to true, the whole line would evaluate to true. If both of them are true, the whole line is true. And if neither are true, the whole line is false. This is Boolean logic. And you may wonder what on earth I'm wittering about. Because what does that have to do with what I've written here? Well, you don't really need to know that. But the thing is that if open is, if the return value of open is true, Perl knows that this whole statement is true. So it won't bother doing this bit. Whereas if open is false, Perl says, well, open's false, but to find out if the whole line evaluates to true, I'm, there, I'm going to have to look at this and see if this is true or not, because if either of them are true, then the value this or this would evaluate to true. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'd suggest not worrying about it, because actually it really doesn't matter. You just get used to typing stuff like open the file or die, and that is kind of like English language really, do this or die, open the file or die. And you know, you can understand it without breaking it down 
into Boolean logic like that. But I just told you that just in case you're interested. So let's run that and see what happens. So now we, um, we're opening our file and there's no error message, so we know it's successful. Let's just try making this wrong. So with the wrong file name, it says input file such and such not found. And when you try to open a file and you output a message, you should always output the name of the file that's not found, because otherwise, you know, input file not found isn't just a horribly cryptic message. So always put the name of the file in there like this. Now let's read that file a line at a time. I'm going to use a while loop and let's put the structure of the while loop in there. So while, the keyword, two round brackets, just like a subroutine call, open a curly bracket and close the curly bracket down here. And in here, I'm going to declare a variable. I'm going to say my dollar line. And I want to set that equal to one line of the file at a time. And to do that, I can say equals. And in angle brackets like this, um, so if you know HTML or XML, it's like tag brackets. So open right, kind of open left angle bracket, close left angle bracket. And in there, I put the name of the file. Now, again, you'll think, if you see this for the first time, what the hell is this? But basically, this here, this command, reads one line from the file. And it will actually return the line that it's read. So I'm returning it to this variable here. So this statement by itself reads a single line of the file and makes this variable refer to it. And if you wrap it in a while loop, you're going to do this over and over again until finally no more lines can be returned. So let's put here print and backslash, whoops. Well, let's put just dollar line actually in the dollar line and then have um, a backslash n. And now if I run this, I'm going to get, it's going to be huge, but all the lines from my text file are printed out like this. In fact, let's get rid of that backslash n because um, when we read a line, a complete line in Perl, and this reads a complete line, we also read the new line character. So here you, you can see that I've now got two new line characters on each line. I'm getting blank lines. But if I run this by itself, then we get the whole file output as is. And I don't even, I don't even need to put the double quotes around it. I could just run it like this, actually print and the variable name semicolon and I get the same thing. So now we've got the lines from the file and the last thing I want to show you is a very very simple example of our first regular expression in Perl. Now let's say that I want to know if this file contains the word egg and you can actually do a lot of stuff including what I'm about to show you in a single line in Perl without even writing all this stuff. And we'll probably go into Perl one-liners later on. But for the moment, I want to show you this stuff because this obviously is a lot more powerful and flexible than a one-liner. So one-liners on a command line are very useful. But if you want to do anything serious in Perl, then you have to know all this stuff about opening files and reading them line by line and that sort of thing. And if you're completely perplexed by this, my advice is just type it when you need it. and if you use it a lot, it'll slowly sink into your head. And if you don't use it a lot, then you don't need to remember it anyway. So you can just look up examples when you need it by typing into Google, read file line by line or something like that. So let's check each line now and to see if it contains the word egg. And to do that, I'm going to delete this print line and I'm going to say my. In fact, no, I'm not. What I'm going to say is if. And I'm going to put an if statement here, so that's if, the keyword if, with round brackets and the curly brackets there. I'm going to put the condition in in a minute, but firstly I'm going to say print and let's say, let's just output the line if it contains the word egg. So I'm just going to actually put here print dollar line semicolon and now we want the condition in because we only want this to be printed if a condition is true. And that condition should only be true if we find the word egg in the line. So I'm going to say dollar line, dollar line, 
equals, and then a kind of twiddle, which I suppose is a tilde, actually, equals tilde. And then two forward slashes, like that. And in the middle of the forward, forward slashes, I'm going to put egg. Now this looks, again, uh, initially unintuitive, but um, Pearl isn't an endless procession of things that are unintuitive. And after you do this a little bit, it will start to make sense. I read this as if line matches egg, basically, or in my head sometimes I say if line equals matches egg. But basically, uh, this equals and a tilde followed by two forward slashes like this is a kind of uh, a thing that doesn't match on whatever you put in the middle in, in here. And the stuff you put in the middle is a regular expression, and in this case it's a literal word, so very, very simple. And the thing that you want to search for, the thing that you want to search in, is here. So I want to search this text, and I want to see if it matches or not this regular expression between the two forward slashes, and if it does, I'll print line. So let's run that. And now we've got a program that will only print a line if it's got egg in it. And we see Reggie here, and egg is in Reggie. And let's look further up here. And actually, they're, they're pretty much all Reggie. There is an actual egg. And uh, probably before I close this particular tutorial, um, you might want to know what to do if you just want to literally match egg and you don't want Reggie. And you can just put spaces in your regular expression like this. So I put a space either side of egg. So now I'm trying to match egg with a space either side of it. And let's run that. And now we've got stuff that literally has the word egg in it. But that would break down if we had, for example, egg full stop somewhere here, because it's literally looking for egg with space either side. And of course, we can get around that, but I'm not going to go into it this time. I'm just going to leave it uh, with this simple example here, because I reckon that's more than enough. So that's it for this time. I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.